Hello, in this video I'm going to show you an example where we have, uh, we're going to be dealing with lists. So we have a list and we have a while loop with menu where we're going to be asking the user what they want to do and we have escape value E for exit. If that value is entered, so if response is E, then we are going to change the condition that is controlling our while loop from yes or from y to n, no, and that will get us out of the loop. Okay, so let's have a look at the code. We have our list of items in stock. Our condition is yes. While that condition is y, then we're going to be running the loop until the exit. Then we have a response that is coming from the user. We're asking the user what you want to do, A to add an element to the list that we have, D to delete an element from the list, C to find an element on the list, or E for exit. The first thing I've done is I've used a string, the string method upper, to make sure that no matter what the user types in, it's going to become an uppercase letter, and then I can compare to my capital E, capital A, and so on, without having the risk of the user typing in E in lowercase, wanting to exit um, the code, not recognizing it, or having to write here, or resp response equals lowercase E, and so on. So by doing this, we are standardizing the, the input from the user. So we've seen what happens if the user types in E, condition gets changed to N, nothing else happens, and we get out, and nothing happens, so we just finish the code, the execution. If the user says A, I want to add an element to the list, we're going to ask the user what element they want to add. I've added a backslash N for new line, so the user is going to enter the value on the new line. We take that element and we again use a method for the list, in this case, element, and we're appending element into our list stock and then we print list so we can see the effect of adding a new element. If the user, on the other hand, types in D, we ask them what element they want to delete. I've added here a nested if statement that will check if that element appears on the list. If it does, then we remove the element from the list and print the new list. And if it doesn't appear, then we give the user a message saying we don't have that element on stock. If we didn't have this extra check and we only had the two lines where you remove the element and print a new list, if the user asks you to delete an element that doesn't appear on the list, you would get an error saying I can't find that element. Okay. Similarly, for C, we have find an element on the list. We're going to ask what element do you want to find. We check if it is on the list. If it is then we use the method index that's going to tell us where on the list it is. It's going to give us the index of that element. Remember, indices start at zero. So when I'm printing where the element is in position one, two, three, I'm adding a one. So it comes as one, two, three, four, and so on. Okay, and that's our while loop and Pending, adding elements to a list, removing elements, or finding where an element is on the list. Now let's run it and see it working. So we're going to get a message saying, do you want to use A for adding element, D deleting, C for finding an element, or E for exiting? Let's say, oh, sorry. Let's say we press A. I put it in lowercase, it doesn't matter because I've used the method to make it uppercase. What element we do we want to add? Box. The new list has pens, pencils, markers, t-shirts, logo stickers as it did, plus box at the end. And then the while loop goes back and it will ask us again. Delete an element. What do we want to delete? Let's say we delete box. The new list goes back to what it was. Find element. Let's say we want to find pens. Element is in position one. If we say find an element and we just type box, we don't have that 
thing in stock so that is not part of our list and finally if we want to exit it stops the execution so that's our code